Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet, and this is going to be the continuation of last video where we are looking into Spring events. So we have already implemented Spring events by using application publisher and event listener annotation, and we have also seen how it works under the hood. And in this video, we are going to look into few advanced features provided by Spring events. Let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So spring events, advanced features, right? And here is what we are going to do. So first we will look into how we can order the listeners we have. So if you have multiple listener, how we can order them to execute one by one. After that, we will also see how we can make use of async annotation in order to invoke your events in parallel. After that, we will see a conditional event listeners, very, very important and useful stuff. After that, we will see global error handling in the listeners, right? So that is basically the overall agenda of this particular video. So let's get started. So in the last couple of videos, we have already seen how to implement your event listeners. So we have implemented this particular example, right? And in the last video, we have also seen how it works internally. So this is basically the internal implementation that we have seen in the last video, right? And if I go into the code, so this is basically the code that we are looking into. So here we had one controller. Here we have this particular event, right? Which have one field, which is order ID. After that we have this order service which is publishing the event by using this application event publisher and we have couple of consumers right so this one is basically for logging the order details and this is basically for sending the email notification right so we have two listeners basically now if i quickly run this code then this is basically up and running now and now if i send the request so let me send it by using this postman then you will see that this particular sending email is basically getting invoked first after that your order placed or this log is being invoked. So what is happening? They are always coming in this order. So if I invoke it again, let's say, then you will see that it is again coming in the same order, right? So we are not able to control the order of it, right? We are not able to control the order of the execution of your listeners. But let's say there could be certain cases, there could be certain cases when I want to invoke them in a sequence. For example, let's say first I want to log them. After that only I want to set the email. So that is basically my requirement, right? So that is when this particular feature comes into picture, right? Which one order in listeners and it is very easy to implement, right? How we can do that? How do we usually order? We make use of at the rate order annotation. So you need to do same stuff over here. So what I will do, I will just give a order annotation over here and I will just pass order ID as one. So it has more priority and it will get executed first. After that, here in the email notification listener, what I will do, I will say order. I will give order as two, right? Simple stuff. So we have given order one over here because I want this listener to be invoked first. And this particular listener, I have given order as two. This is basically annotation coming from Spring. So if you see over here, it is coming from Spring Core annotation. This is basically Spring's functionality. And this is not specific to event listeners. You can make use of it in many places right so this is basically one use case of your order annotation and now let's try to redeploy our application and it is up now so let me just send a quick request and guess what it did not really work and why it did not work because i have given the order annotation on the wrong place it should be over here right it should be over here on the on your actual listener rather than being on your component right so my bad basically now what i will do i'll just try to rerun it and now if I send it again, then you will see first our order placed for order ID is printed. That means this particular order one after that, the sending email will be printed, right? So that is basically how you can easily order your event listeners. Very, very simple stuff, right? So let me just go back over here and order in event listeners. We have seen, right? Very simple stuff. Just make use of a at the rate order annotation. After that, let's look into async event listeners, right? So if I go back over here, so this is something that we have discussed already in the last few videos as well, that this particular execution is synchronous. This is happening in a single thread, main thread basically. The publisher will publish through event publisher. It will come to application event multicaster. This guy will fetch all the listeners from the cache and this guy will call it one by one first it will call this listener after that it will call this listener right so synchronous execution in a main thread and what if i want to make it asynchronous now for example i don't want these listeners to be invoked one after another rather i want to invoke them parallel in different threads how i can do that 
well that also is pretty simple stuff well, let's go back to code and let's see what happens what i will do i'll just remove this order momentarily and let me just remove this guy as well now what we want to do we just want to make use of at the rate async annotation because i want to make them in parallel right so i will just make them in parallel because what could happen let's say if the email notification listener is taking some time let's say two three seconds then your log order will be just waiting or your other listeners will be just waiting for your one listener to complete a task right so that is when you can make use of async so that everything runs in parallel right and even if your email is taking time your other listeners will do their job in the meantime right so that is basically the advantage of making this guy async isn't it so in order to just see let me just add some sleep over here so here what i will do i'll just say thread dot sleep and let's say i will just add 3000 millis that means three seconds delay over here and i will just add an exception to method signature and after that i will just add another print statement saying that email sent email sent right and here also i'll add the similar stuff in the other guy as well so let's say that so let's say logging is not taking much time probably let's say one second it would not take one second but let's add that so that we will see some kind of delay over here as well and here i will say and here i will say log order created just to highlight that it is completed right now what we will do let's just rerun this and let me go back over here and send it now it is saying sending email after that email sent after that we have order placed for order one and after that we have this log order created now is this synchronous no it is not because your sending email is printing after that it is waiting for three seconds after that it is printing that email is sent and after that your order related stuff is printing that means this guy is still synchronous it is not asynchronous at all well why this is happening this is happening because we need to enable a sync right enable a sync so this is basically the configuration we need to provide on our configuration class in order to enable a sync execution inside our application right now what i will do i'll just stop and rerun let's try to hit it now if you see sending email for order one and immediately it printed order placed for order id one after one second it printed this statement and after three seconds it printed that the email sent for an order so that is basically how you can simply make use of a sync annotation to make them parallel right now what is happening all the listeners are running in a parallel right so this may take more time this may take less time but they will start together isn't it so that will be an advantage in a long term when you have multiple listeners so let's say you have these three listeners and you may have multiple listeners but if you are running it in synchronous way then one may take a lot of time and after that this guy will start it will take its own time after that this guy will start will take its own time and overall execution will take a lot of time so in order to solve that you can just make them async and everything will just work in parallel and work just fine right so now if i go back over here so we have seen async event listeners as well and it is a pretty simple stuff right so just run your listeners in parallel isn't it now i know what you're thinking i know what you're thinking and you have a question that what if someone uses order and async together it's a pretty valid question what will happen so let's say let me just go ahead and add order over here let's say order one and here in the log listener i will add at the rate order order two right and now if i run this code let's see what happens let me just send it so if you see over here i don't see much difference over here right it's the same execution flow that we saw earlier right it's not a it's not a big change over here but now if you see over here first log is coming from email notification listener and second log is coming from your log order detail listener now what i will do i'll just change the order right i will just say one and two to this particular guy so let's see what happens this time so let me just try to send it now and now if you see we first got order placed after that we got email right so do you see what is happening it is honoring your order annotation as well so it will honor both what happens so let's go back over here now what happens when we only make use of order right so let's say this is order one right and this is order two and let's say this is basically our order three and they are synchronous right they are synchronous now here we are not making use of async first order service will send your event then your first order listener will be invoked after that your second order listener will be invoked and so on right so all this is happening in a single thread right in a single thread it is happening 
But now let's say we don't have an order annotation. We only have a sync annotation. So what this guy will do? This guy will run each listener in a separate thread, right? So they will be continue working as it is, right? But what happens when we give both order and a sync annotation? When we give both order and a sync annotation, your each listener will be running in separate thread because we are running them asynchronously by using a sync annotation. But your ordering will also be honored. Spring will honor this ordering while submitting your task to your executor. Which listener will get submitted to your executor? Thread pool executor will be decided by the order annotation if we put both of them together, right? So that is basically what is happening over here. So they are honoring both order and async annotation as well. So they are submitting the task by using this order, but they are running asynchronously as well. We cannot guarantee the execution at runtime, right? Because this guy may take more time, this guy may take less time, right? So they may start in some order, but they may not complete in the same order, right? So that is basically a different case. So that is how you can make use of them together, right? Now what I will do, let's go back over here. Now let's move to conditional event listeners, right? Now this is going to be fun. Now let's say I want to invoke a listener only when there is a certain condition which is fulfilling. For example, let's say we have this order over here, right? We have this order created event. Now in this event, let's say we have an amount, right? And for each amount which is exceeding, let's say, 1000 rupees, what I want to do, I want to invoke some other listener as well. So I want to invoke another listener if amount is greater than, if amount is greater than, let's say, 1000 rupees, then I want to invoke this listener as well. And let's give it a name as high value order listener, right? Now, in order to achieve this, something called as conditional listeners comes into picture. Now, let's see how we can implement that. Now before that what we will do, we will just add another field over here saying let's say amount, right? So we'll add a double value amount. I will add it to the constructor and let's add the getter as well. So I'll say command n, I'll say getter. Let's add getter for our amount as well. After that, let's go to order service and while placing the order, we will just collect amount as well, right? And the same amount we will pass on to this particular event, right? So I'll say amount. So this particular amount, I'm passing it over here to this particular event. And now your listener will basically catch it, right? Now let's go ahead and add a new listener. So let me quickly add it. So there we go. I have added this simple listener, right? So high value order listener, right? It's a conditional listener basically that we are looking into. And here I'm just simply printing that it's a high value order. And the order ID is this and amount is this basically, right? Now what is the condition that we want to add? We want to add a condition that the amount should be greater than 1000, right? So what we can do here in the, in the listener, we can just add a condition, right? And here we need to add an expression that hash event, right? So event dot amount should be greater than 1000 rupees, right? Simple stuff. So amount, so event dot amount should be greater than 1000 rupees. So if this condition is true, then only invoke this guy. Otherwise don't invoke. So that is basically a simple condition. And guess what? What we need to do? We need to update our controller as well. So what I will do, I'll just take the parameter probably from a request parameter. So I'll say request param. And here I will simply collect double amount. So simple amount we will collect and we'll just pass the same amount over here. And that's it. Now let's just try to rerun this code. What I'll do, I'll just copy this. I'll go back over here and I will add the request parameter. Let's say amount is, let's say 10 rupees. And now let's send it. And now if you see everything is printing, but our, this particular listener is not invoked yet, right? This listener is not invoked. Which one? High value order listener is not invoked. Do you see this particular statement printed? No, you don't because it is not invoked yet. Now what we will do, let's add amount as let's say 1100 right now 1100 we are passing now let's send it now if you see high value order detected now if you see the statement is being printed that means our listener is being invoked with this condition right so that is how your conditional listener simply work right very very simple stuff and that is basically the beauty of your conditional event listeners based on certain condition you can invoke your listeners right simple stuff now let's go back over here so we have seen this conditional event listeners as well now next one is global error handling in listeners now let's say i want to handle errors in each of these listeners of course i can go to each listener add a try catch block and handle the exceptions right 
So that is some kind of overhead to me. But in order to handle this in better way, your Spring events give you ability to globally handle these errors. So what we can do, Spring provides the ability to override this multicaster and provide the custom implementation of our multicaster and handle the errors globally, right? So let's see how we can do. So now here, if you see, I have added this config class and, and I have added this simple event config and I have given it a configuration annotation. Now here, what I will do, I'll add a simple bean, let's say public. We will say application event multicaster and again, we'll give the name as application event multicaster. Now let's convert it to a bean. So I'll just say at the rate bean over here and here what we can do, we can just simply create a new simple application multicaster and here let me catch it into a variable. I'll say alt enter, introduce a local variable. So there we go. This is basically the local variable we have created. And here what we will do now, now if I say simple application multicaster dot, we have set error handler. Now here what we can do simply for each error we are getting, let's say for each error. So let, let me just add a Lambda expression. We can just print something, right? What we can print. Let me just add a simple print statement. That means error in event listener. And what I will do, I will just throw an exception from one of the listeners. So I'll say throw new runtime exception and I will just print the respective exception and what we will do we are ready to return this basically so we will just return this particular simple multicaster over here right and now let's try to run this code let me go ahead and hit this so now if you see the error in event listener is being printed over here so the same exception can be handled in a different listeners by using this particular application event multicaster which we are overriding basically right so we are creating basically the custom bean to handle all the exception which are occurring inside our event listeners so that we don't really have to go ahead and handle exception everywhere we can just go ahead and handle it globally basically right so that is basically a simple feature provided by your spring events right so these are basically the advanced feature provided by your spring events which will come in handy when you actually work on spring event publishers and listeners right so that is basically the simple stuff very very simple stuff that we have seen in this particular video that's it for this video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about advanced features inside spring events that's it for this video see you in the next video